Welcome to my life as a wildlife photographer in spring. My name is Gunnar Dresla and as you can see the forests here in Norway are already bursting with life. In the next 40 minutes I'm going to show you black grouse, caper kelly, horned grapes, puffins and a few more. So stay tuned and don't forget to vote for your favorite segment in the comments. In March, I was still hanging out some nuts for the squirrels. I decided that I was done with baiting in general, but I didn't want to cut them loose before the cold days had passed, because it was my fault that they were used to this spot. The winter held a tight grip on the land this year, so I often sat outside to get my body used to being in the cold and testing my gear. In the same time I had my eyes on several spots that seemed promising for the coming seasons. This place here is on a direct path along this cliff. The sun comes in in the evening in the west and also in the summer even longer. So this might be optimal for badgers or foxes that have to come through here, but also moose, hares, other animals, because it's not only that path, there's also one going in that direction where I just came from. So it will be interesting to see if the camera catches something, because there's definitely something coming through here. I don't want to talk too much, I want to just leave now, but I also want to tell you that I found a carcass, I think of a young badger, the skull over there, really fresh, still, f yeah, a lot of fur around it. So there is some activity here and I've also seen a white-tailed eagle uh, just a few days ago, must have been after that carcass. So really interesting location, now just let's get out of here. The days grew long in April and many birds returned. I tried to use more time on scouting again, which is in my opinion one of the most crucial things in wildlife photography. It was about time to get back into the camo tent and get ready for the black grouse lake. It's one of the best times of the year and I can hardly wait for next morning to come. Clear sunshine, clear morning, um, hopefully backlit. Hopefully the animals are there of course. Um, looking really forward to that and I really need it. Um, 
I need to feel spring and some progress. As you can see, I hung my camera this time into my tripod the other way around so that I can film really steady, flat to the ground. I haven't tried that last year, but uh, I always wish I had. So this time we do it like this. Mornings here can be quite different, um, uh, what you can see with the black grouse and also with the caper kelly a bit. With black grouse the cold weather has delayed them a bit and if it's a cold morning where the sun dis doesn't really come up, they're also really calmer in their leg, in their play. And uh, I've seen that last year if you remember and I see this this year. On top today, uh, there were no females showing up, and that made them quite calm. They didn't fight much. And then also, like, it was a beautiful morning, but the light didn't really come over the clouds until late. So um, the marsh didn't really warm up, and I must say, even though the other time I had snow, this was a cold night. Um, I mean, I was fine, but as soon as I started getting ready for photos and having my arms out of the sleeping bag, this was cold. This was the first time on the Black Cross Lake this year that I actually used some warmers, because normally I'm fine. But yeah, this was a freezing morning. I just wanted to say with this topic about the black grouse and the caper kelly that 
even though the black rose is in generally doing fine and probably the the Kepa Kelly in overall is doing fine these birds suffer from human impact as many other species and yeah climate change is of course always a bigger a big story but the bigger story for me as i know from my biology background is habitat loss uh, because habitat loss also increases climate change and so on and so forth but it directly takes off biodiversity and in case of the black grouse that's for example if uh, yeah marshes and uh, swamp lands are dried up for more timber production and that's an issue for sure uh, but as said the black grouse in general is still doing quite great in Norway quite numerous but Never underestimate how much nature destruction is also taking place in the Scandinavian countries. And then for the Cape Kelly, it's mostly uh, habitat destruction that old growth forest is cut down. A huge issue right now in Norway. It's not seldom that I hear from someone that had a Cape Kelly place uh, where they're doing great and the next year it's all cut down. I think this forestry is not the future and has to be stopped because um, no one wants to live in a place like this. I mean, sorry for the met metaphor, the comparison. Um, just imagine someone bombs down your hometown and then is afterwards like, go live there. No, no one wants to live there after the forest is completely erased. And... I feel inclined to talk about this because it's happening also here in Norway where people imagine that we have so much nature though it is decreasing at a rapid speed. This is going to be very exciting. Uh, it's around six o'clock in the evening. In an hour, I want to be in the tent. I mean, I'm in the tent, but I want to be in the tent and quiet, not leaving anymore, because we're here to photograph a Cape Kelly. And this is a really secretive spot. And I was just invited by a friend. Um, and I just swear to never go here uh, without asking and just not going to talk to anyone about where this is and i'm not going to talk about this in general i mean i normally don't talk about other places as well right so um this is really secretive with the Cape kelly they're really shy way more shy than the black grouse and i will sleep here on the snow <laughs> and i'm just so excited because i've never seen a real Cape kelly lake before Two cameras set up, um, 400 mm at 4.5, 70 to 200 if I need a wide angle, a wider angle. Ooh, this is so exciting. <laughs>
you have to imagine that you have this place kind of round shaped like a pie or something and each slice is the area for one Kepa Kelly male. And um, in between of course they fight over uh, their dominance and only for a few years uh, they are on their height of their performance and that's when they get yeah, their mates. And in that circle or pie or how cake, cake or whatever you would like, um, the females are just going round and round and round. And they look how everyone is performing. And the males, typically you see that, um, they start jumping if they see there's audience. They really turn it up. And of course, yeah, then they fight also in between. That can happen. Really strong with their wings. Um, Caper Kellys can die on the lake. has been snowing the whole morning. Uh, the Cape Kelly was here from half past four to around seven o'clock. But since then you just hear the females in the trees and you hear a male further away. And around two weeks later, the snow was mostly gone in the hills, and the breeding season for waterfowl had begun.
here on a trip to photograph horned grapes or Slavonian grapes. They're easily mixed up with black necked grapes. I nearly did that my I did that myself. Uh, something that tells them apart is that their forehead, like the horned grapes, it's not as steep and the black necked grapes have a really steep forehead in comparison. Um had a really good night. Now the light in the morning is a bit too harsh. There is at least three couples of them in this bay and they are fierce against their own kind. Um, they are always chasing each other off. And for me this is the first time that I had the chance to photograph them and film them. From a low perspective I hung the camera upside down again. Just looking out that they're far enough away. And um, yeah, I'm basically trying out this uh, before they get chicks. So I'm trying out some different spots. Next night we try another spot. Because uh, like other grapes species, uh, they carry the young on the back and that would be really great and really cute to see and to film. That would be awesome. And um, like also other grape species, they dance. We've seen that, that they're dancing. Amazing. Uh, I didn't expect that, to see that. So we've seen the dance, which is awesome. I didn't expect to see the dance there today. It still seems to be something they r still do. Um, I think we are one week, one and a half week past mating. So I think it could still happen, but I don't necessarily expect it. And yeah, if this works out, we come back to these locations later and hopefully see Young. That would be the main goal, for this year at least. The horned grape, uh, it has two subspecies. One that's pale arctic, that's the one we're looking at. And then there's a North American one. And here a bit north of Trondheim is a yeah, hot spot for them in the lakes. Uh, we have, uh, not far from here, we have the lake with the most abundance of horned grapes. Um, I think it's really neat that they can, like with the feathers that are obviously their horns, they can raise them. Uh, and they have really hypnotizing red eyes. It might be the most exciting uh, waterfowl that I photographed in the last year. And 
even though we didn't have direct sunlight, the evening and morning light was really pretty. One problem though, I might have built the height a bit in the wrong direction. That happens sometimes when you do it the first time, of course. And uh, yeah, that was a bit of a disadvantage. And then this morning, the horned creeps didn't really want to wake up, apparently. <laughs> but we've seen a... Is it the black-throated diver? Yeah, black-throated diver. And some other waterfall species. And that was just... Um, a yeah, really cool morning. Um, I didn't really get disappointed here at this spot. It's just a bit difficult with the positioning of the camera close to the shore and the grass in front and everything that's growing in front. But still, video, made, video wise, I think it worked, worked out well. A second spot for the horned grapes didn't work out, so I found someone else to film.
day has finally come after I've been observing this place here for a long time with my trail cameras basically since yeah last year. Today I want to set up the camouflage tent, hide and I hope they can stay for the whole season. I to set up. Just don't want to spend too much time out here uh, because I mean, at any time, an animal could pass through here. And I put up the wildlife camera, of course, the track camera, to see how the height is making a difference on the passing here, so that I can evaluate if it can stay or if it has to go again. Um, if it can stay. My idea is uh, to photograph here for the whole season, leave the tent for the whole summer season. And yeah, we have to see how that goes. At the end of May, I wanted to return to Doffer Fjellenrunde. But the winter was just about to disappear in the mountains, and the winds were more than rough. Small birds, even though already here, were hiding. At this time of the year, I do seldom focus on musk oxen. You have to be cautious for their own good, since they just gave birth to a new generation. My highlight was to spot this couple of roughs. But after two nights, we packed our stuff and left for the coast. And it must be said, if I hadn't had company, I would have turned on my heel and have driven back to Trondheim. The weather would not be changing much at the sea, but the birds would have a harder time hiding. Really sure what's gonna get out of this trip because it's uh, pretty rough. Been out here for two days on Rinde now and another two days on Dovre. And the weather this week in spring is it's late spring, but it's insane. Uh, 
uh, it's suddenly really cold again and the wind is like yeah I don't know the gale for tomorrow is supposed to be 22 meters per second you can put that in the calculator how many kilometers per hour that is but it's pretty much that's a lot I think it's something like 70 or 80 oh yeah it's super hard to even get a photo in flight, hold the camera because the wind is just pushing it up and stuff. Uh, yeah, really hard. Not easy to make vlogs here. So uh, keep it to small messages. I must admit that this trip had me really on my knees in between because vlogging is not really that possible if the wind is that strong and it's raining insane amounts in between but yeah I haven't been vlogging so much but uh, I spent some time with the puffins of course with the gannets that was really hard though um, but especially with some oyster catchers here and I've seen an otter as well really quickly though only got a photo of its back but I've seen it, I know it's here, so it's just trying, 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 of course. And what I really enjoyed is I went and tried some long exposure landscape photography and it went semi well. I really needed a lot of practice in that again. I haven't done it in a while, but it was a great amount of fun in any case to just do that while the weather was really not good. And I know now that I need a bigger cloth to clean my lens in between because, yeah. When my cloth was wet, the game was over.
like all the hard days have paid off. It was really insane with the wind the last couple of days and the rain and whatever. But this last Sunday, beautiful conditions. I had a great lot of fun. And now it's time to turn home and get back to Trondheim. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon on the next one.